real quick, I also want to say it's very possible that I'm going to butcher some names this evening, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, next up, presenting, will be beside Jas Jaspers. Hi Jaspers, and I am from the Netherlands. Today I will be talking about my idea for a mobile platform for translating handwritten characters into digital form. My father is a marketing lecturer for two different schools, and I have seen firsthand the time it takes to grade these papers. After learning about technology advances in optical character recognition, I realized this could be a great way to improve efficiency. Teachers like to use multiple choice for quickly grading quizzes, but does multiple choice thoroughly test knowledge? Japanese teachers, for example, are overworked by grading and often continue grading during class. What if we could grade open answers with the speed of a scantron and at a fraction of the cost? Imagine pointing your mobile device at your quiz having it read your answers, and getting a grade immediately. Language, for example, is best learned through writing, and this platform takes quizzes back to written form and away from multiple choice, all while reducing the time teachers spend on grading. Other applications include police reports, surveying, note-taking, and any other field where writing has to be digitized I am looking for a broad application in the market to increase efficiency and a partner to help along the way. We might not want to face it, but writing is still an important skill to have and may be here to stay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and up next, we have Cameron Hilo. Celsius, you're at risk. And up here, our water doesn't even usually get above 60. And all throughout the world, that can be the case depending on the time of the year. So, when you fall in, uh, the first problem is shock. The moment you hit cold water, your body can go into shock, start immediately losing a lot of heat, and you can have some serious medical issues from that, as well as you start to panic. If you're in there for 10 or 12 minutes, you can die of hypothermia. And unfortunately, even in our community, we know that all too well. There was a family not that long ago that three of the four of them were not able to return. So I want to fix that. And there's a really simple way to do that. Currently, a lot of people still wear life jackets. So why don't we take that thing that makes you float 
and integrate the rest of it into it as well. So our first step is to add a heating element. Through this, we can take that 10 to 12 minute window and prolong it to 30 or even 60 minutes so that you have plenty of time before you have a serious injury or even death. Then the other thing is, we need to get you out of that water and get you medical treatment. So we're integrating GPS location technology into the life jacket that triggers when you have an emergency. Your GPS location is then accurately sent to first responders so they can come to your precise location and pull you out. Usually there's like a 20 minute window from when that call is made, so we can start the help right away. So with this technology, we're looking at filing provisional patents to protect it. And now we're gonna enable you so that when you go and conquer nature, nature doesn't conquer you. Thank you. students are really familiar with here. You don't have a car and you need to get home. If you do, but home is more than a couple miles away. There's not a lot of options available to you. Facebook is on, usage is on the decline. Barcourt was shut down last year and Uber and Lyft can be really expensive. This gap in the market is what we plan to conquer with Rideshare, an app that makes it easy to find a ride and get it when you want it and when you need it. With Rideshare, drivers are able to post a route with a start and an end point. Riders, riders can easily browse through these routes and find one that works best for them. The app will support in-app messaging to allow for negotiation between the driver and the rider about driver compensation and additional stops along the way. So no safety for both riders and drivers is a concern. And so to address this, um, students will have to sign up with their own tech email, and there's also a review process so you can check and make sure the person you're riding with is you know, safe. Uh, Rideshare can also be easily reskinned for any university and rebranded. And in order to make money on this product, we would either have like donations, because it's a small service, or possibly um, taking a percentage of the transaction between the customers. And so, so. <laughs>
until they take the same level of certification that a taxi driver has to take. Excuse me? a quick little break um, to let you know so a little bit about this event. It, so it's being hosted by the Innovation Center for Entrepreneurship. And this is the first competition within the Husky Innovate series. And this will be leading up to a series of other events that will be happening over the course of the year, preparing students with their ideas and taking those ideas and moving them forward to potential commercialization and bigger projects. So with that said, coming up next is Gary Trump. Every student knows 